So a few days back, we celebrated the appearance of Srivast Pandit. I thought I would speak about the glories of Srivast Pandit. Of course, Srivast Pandit's home is just there uh, on the main road as we come past the yoga peak and go a little further on and you come to the house of Srivast Pandit. So Srivast Pandit is a neighbor of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And although Lord Chaitanya appeared at the, his birthplace is at the yoga peak, the main place of his pastimes was more in the house of Srivast Pandit. Just like Lord Krishna appeared in Mathura, but he went to Vrindavan for his Bala Leela. And so similarly, Lord Chaitanya appeared at the yoga peak, but most of his pastimes took place in the home of Srivast Pandit. So Srivast Pandit is one of the Panchatattva, and we consider Srivast Pandit to be like the ex uh, in expansion of Srila Narada Muni. Mm, in the Panchatattva, we see the different features of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Panchatattva Makam Krishnam, Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam, Bhakta Bhattaram Bhaktakyam, Namami Bhakta Shaktikam. So, Panchatat Padmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa, the form of devotion. Swarupakam, the, the Swarupa, the original, the Swarup of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Swarupakam, Swarupa, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Yandam Sinsha. Bhakta Bhattara, the incarnation of the Lord. Bhakta Bhattara, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Bhaktavataram Bhaktakyam Devoti Bhaktakyam Hosendra Namami Bhakta Shaktikam and then the, the energy of the Lord. Namami Bhakti Shaktikam Jujitu the Namya. So we have the we have the uh, the Lord expansion in the form of Lord Nityananda. And then we have the Lord's incarnation in the form of Advaita Acharya. And we have the Lord's uh, we have the Lord's uh, energy in the form of Gadarha Pandit. And then we have the Lord's 
a picture as a devotee in the form of Shiva's so Shiva's Pandit is the marginal potency of the Lord. Shiva's Pandit is the marginal potency of the Lord. is the internal potency. And we have Advaita, Nityananda, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are all Vishnu Tattva. So Srivast Pandit was older, much older than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was like uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's father. And Srivast Pandit lived with his family. There were three, four brothers. They all live together, joint family system. And they were brahmanas. They didn't work. How did they live? They depended on the mercy of Krishna. So Srivas Pandit was a very wonderful devotee and uh, people, sometimes people would be envious of him. So there was one, one nasty man. He planned to do. He planned to dis, He planned to do some harm to the good name of Shiva's Pandit. So one night he went into the courtyard of Shiva's Pandit's home, and he put different paraphernalia there for worshiping. The goddess Chandi, he put wine and he put some animal flesh and horrible things which are used in tantric worship. And the man was thinking that when people see this, then they will be very disgusted and they will condemn Shiva's Pandit. So the next morning Shiva's Pandit looked in his garden in his yard and he saw these things. So he immediately called everyone, everyone come and see, come and see what's in my yard. <laughs> and people, all the brahmanas who were living there, they all came and they saw all the paraphernalia. They, immediate, they immediate, immediately called for some sweepers to come and clean the place. No one even thought for a minute that it could have anything to do with Srivast Pandit. Everybody had such a high opinion of Srivast. And the man who put all of these paraphernalia there in his yard, that man, the evil-minded man, he got inflicted with leprosy in a few days. That is a reaction for doing harm to trying to trying to be offensive for being so offensive to such a nice devotee. Another time Srivas Pandit went over to Navadweep and he was desiring to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So he knew there was a person there called Devananda Pandit who was teaching the Srimad Bhagavatam. He was running a school and he had a number of students. People were enrolling. They all wanted to learn Srimad Bhagavatam from this Devananda Pandit. And this Devananda Pandit, actually, he, 
he, he wasn't a devotee. He didn't have much knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm, but people somehow respected him and somehow he attracted many young people. They came there to learn from him. So, Srivas Pandit was eager to hear Srimad Bhagavatam and he thought even though this Devananda Pandit is not really a devotee but still he will speak the Srimad Bhagavatam. I, will, I want to hear it. And so Srivas Pandit went and he sat in the back of the class and the young men, the young students were in the front and Srivas was at the back. But when he heard, when Srivas heard Devananda Pandit speak, reading the Srimad Bhagavatam, then uh, uh, Srivas Pandit's love for Krishna awakened and he began to experience different ecstatic symptoms in his body. So these different ecstatic symptoms awakened in his body and he began to shed tears and he was rolling on the ground. And so the, the young students who were there, who were supposed to hear Srimad Bhagavatam from Devananda Pandit, when they saw Srivas like this, they thought he's just disturbing the class. So they roughly picked him up and dragged him out of the classroom. Sometimes we get people come like that to our temple. They roll on the ground and they cry. Usually they're just making a show. But Srivas Pandit was genuinely, he was, a, he, he actually had a genuine love for Krishna. And these students, he didn't handle Srivas Pandit in a very gentlemanly manner. And Devananda Pandit was a teacher and he didn't stop them. And because he did not stop the students, so he got the reactions for the mis mal mal handling Srivas Pandit. The teacher is responsible for the activities of the students. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the third canto, we have the example of the four Kumaras going to the spiritual world. And they came to the seventh door and they were stopped by Jai and Vijay. And Jai and Vijay were questioning that these four young boys, they are not qualified to enter into the spiritual world. And the four Kumaras became angry at them and they cursed Jai and Vijay that they should go to the material world. And at that time, Lord Padmanabha, Lord Vishnu, came there with Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. And Lord Padmanabha apologized to the four Kumaras. And he, he said to the four Kumaras, I'm very sorry that my servants did not respect you and they tried to stop you from entering 
他对古马尔斯兄弟说：“我非常抱歉，我的仆人们阻止了你们，没有好好的对待你们。” And the Lord apologized to them. He said, "They're my servants." He said, it, 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 "He said, I, I'm, I, I'm responsible for whatever they do." And sometimes people would write letters to Srila Prabhupada, and they would complain that, you know, I met one of your devotees on the street, and they forced me to purchase a book. And Prabhupada would write back to them and apologize and say, "Oh, I'm very sorry." Prabhupada would write back to them and apologize and say, "Oh, I'm very sorry." At the same time, Prabhupada would also speak on behalf of the devotees that my disciples are very dedicated. They've sacrificed everything for Krishna consciousness. 同时说，帕帕也会代表他的奉献者们讲话。他说：“我的门徒们，他们是非常具有献身精神的。他们为了传播奎什的知觉，献出了自己的一切。” So they may have treated you in a rough manner, and I, on, I apologize for their behavior, and I request you to please forgive them. 他们可能对待你的态度或者是方式非常的粗鲁，我请求你能够原谅他们。But they have a a very strong faith in the message of Krishna, and they're, they're very, they see also the, the value of my books. Therefore, they were eager that you should also have a book. Anyway, the point is that the, the teacher is responsible for the behavior of the student. And Devananda Pandit, as the teacher, he should have stopped his students from mistreating Sri Vas Pandit. Devananda Pandit 本来应该是阻止他的学生们去错误的对待 Sri Vas Pandit. But he didn't say anything. 但他什么都没有说 So later on, when Sri when Devananda Pandit wanted to get.、Uh, An understanding of Srimad Bhagavatam from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya refused. 之后，当德文南普坦德想从主持他的马哈普布那里了解什么八卦他们的时候，主持他的马哈普布拒绝了。Lord Chaitanya said, "You are a offender, a pure devotee." 主持他们说，你是纯粹奉献者的冒犯者。But you will never get my blessing. 你永远不能得到我的祝福。So. It was only later, after Devananda Pandit had、uh, rendered service to another devotee, Vakreshwara Pandit, that he became、uh, that Lord Chaitanya instructed him. Vakreshwara Pandit was a great. Kirtanir, he loved to chant and dance, and he would dance and sing for many, many hours, sometimes three days without stopping. Vakreshwar Pandit is a very famous Kirtanir. He is very fond of dancing and singing. Sometimes he would sing for three days without stopping. Vakreshwar Pandit is a very famous Kirtanir. He is very fond of dancing and singing. Sometimes he would sing for three days without stopping. Vakreshwar Pandit is a very famous Kirtanir. He is very fond of dancing and singing. Sometimes he would sing for three days without stopping. Vakreshwar Pandit is a very famous Kirtanir. He is very fond of dancing and singing. Sometimes he would sing for three days without stopping. Kept the crowds back. He wouldn't let people go and disturb Vakreshwar Pandit. Vakreshwar Pandit, he was singing and dancing. When Devananda Pandit was there, he kept the crowds back. He wouldn't let people go and disturb Vakreshwar Pandit. So, because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he was getting the mercy of a pure devotee. Because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he was getting the mercy of a pure devotee. Because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he was getting the mercy of a pure devotee. Because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he was getting the mercy of a pure devotee. Because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he was getting the mercy of a pure devotee. Because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he was getting the mercy of a pure devotee. Because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he was getting the mercy of a pure devotee. Because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he was getting the mercy of a pure devotee. Because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he was getting the mercy of a pure devotee. Because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he was getting the mercy of a pure devotee. Because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he was getting the mercy of a pure devotee. Because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he was getting the mercy of a pure devotee. Because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he was getting the mercy of a pure devotee. Because Devananda Pandit was rendering service to Vakreshwar Pandit, he Then Lord Chaitanya taught Devananda Pandit Sri Mad Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya told Devananda Pandit that 
You should never think that you have understood Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of Lord Krishna. And just as Lord Krishna is infinite, the qualities of Lord Krishna are infinite. We can never know everything about Lord Krishna. In the same way, we can never know everything of the Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way, Lord Chaitanya was teaching Devananda Pandit how to understand the Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srivas Pandit loved to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam and there would be regular programs at his home and Lord Chaitanya began to come there regularly, especially after he took initiation when he came back from Gaya. And he arranged that every night they would have kirtan in the home of Srivas Pandit. So they would have kirtan only for the devotees. Those people who were not devotees, they were not allowed to. And there was, there was the one Brahmana, he wanted to see the kirtan, but they said, no, no, you can't come, you're not, he was, he was not a, he was a Karmakandi Brahman, he was not a devotee, Vaishnava Brahman. So the Brahman was so angry, he cursed Lord Chaitanya, he broke his Brahman thread, and he said, I curse you that you will never enjoy material life. <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya was very happy to get that curse. And meant later on he was able to take sannyas and leave his material, leave the family. Another person who wanted to see the kirtan in Srivas Pandit's home was the mother-in-law of Srivas Pandit. So she was hiding, she, she hid behind the curtains one day. When, when Lord Chaitanya began the kirtan, he could immediately understand there was somebody there who shouldn't be there. And so when Srivas Pandit went to look and he found his mother-in-law, then he dragged her out. Get out, you're not allowed to come in. And now another person who wanted to see the kirtan was the brahmachari. Who'd all, he only lived on milk and fruits. He never, ate, he never took any cooked food. So he begged Srivas Pandit again and again, please, please, I just want to see the kirtan, I, please allow me, please, I begged many times. So finally Srivas Pandit said, well, you can try, you know, you can go and hide in the room and Maybe, maybe you can get to see the kirtan. So Lord Chaitanya came and all the devotees came and they began the kirtan. But Lord Chaitanya said, no, something is wrong. Somebody is here. Is there anybody here who shouldn't be here? And at that time, the brahmachari came out, and he said, Oh, please forgive me, I just wanted to see the kirtan. 
I'm a brahmachari and I only live on milk and fruits. Lord Chaitanya was not impressed. Get this fruit drink, milk drinker and fruit eater out of here. <laughs> Does he think he can get love of God just by being a brahmachari and living on milk and fruit? And the brahmachari became very humble when he fell at the feet of Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya gave mercy to him and told him, don't ever think you can ever get love of God just by milk, living on milk and fruit. Don't ever be proud of your austerity. Remember, the Supreme Lord is everyone's master and we are all his servants. You can only approach him by devotion, no other way. And so the brahmachari's heart was changed by the words of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya blessed him. So the, there were one, there were many neighbors, of course, who did not like the kirtan and allowed. And the beating of the madanga and the shouting of the holy names was disturbing the neighborhood. And there were many brahmanas in the neighborhood. So at one point, the brahmanas went to complain to the kazi. Because these brahmanas were the smarter brahmans. They were not devotee brahmans. Smarter, I mean, they're brahman by birth, but they don't really have the qualities of brahman. So they went to the Chankazi and complained that these to these people in Srivast Pandit's home. They're awake all night, they're beating the drums, we can hardly sleep. So the Chankati came with the soldiers and they broke the Madanga drum. When we do the, the drama of the Chankazi, we, we, we often show that incident, the Chankazi coming to the home of Srivast Pandit, he took the drum and smashed it on the ground. And they threatened, they threatened everyone, if you do this again, if you're making noise like this again, we'll make you all into Muslims. In those days, it was very easy to make Hindus into Muslims. They would just take some water in their hand and throw it. And if the water landed on you, then you, you know, you're no more Hindu, now you're a Muslim. <laughs> so this happened. There was this one man, Subudirai. 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 He was a wealthy man. So he had one servant, a young Mohammedan boy. And, and one point that this young Mohammedan boy did something wrong and Subhuti Rai hit him the kingdom. Kingdom. Spin. Huh? Yeah. 
Don't left a mark on the boy's body. So later on, that young boy grew up to be a very powerful Mohammedan man. And, and he got a big position in the government. And his wife saw the mark on his body. And she asked him, what's this mark? And he told her, no, when I was a young boy, I did something wrong and that Tsuguri Rai beat me. So his wife said, you should get revenge on him. You should do something to get revenge back on him. And her husband said, no, no, I did something wrong, I deserved it. But wife said, no, you have to do something, you have to get revenge. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, I'll make him a Muslim. <laughs> they got some water, threw it on him. <laughs> <laughs> it's all so booty, I thought, oh, now I'm a, what, what am I going to do? So he went to the Brahmanas and he asked the Brahmanas, what can I do? <laughs> and the Brahmanas told him, the only atonement is to drink boiling ghee. <laughs> if you drink violin ghee, you die. <laughs> so Subhuti Rai thought, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to do so, so then he, met, he went to see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, he said, what you have to do is chant the holy name and serve the Vaishnavas. So he went to Vrindavan and he would uh, collect all the firewood. He'd go around and collect all the dry wood, just like we see ladies here sometimes, the village ladies, they'll go and collect the dry wood. No use it for fire. So Subhuti Rai would go around and collect dry wood and he'd get all the dry wood and he would sell it in the market and with the money he would buy some yogurt. Because there were many Bengali people come to Vrindavan, like you go to Vrindavan, you see there's a lot of Bengali people there. Lord Chaitanya's time also, the Goswamis, many of them, they came from Bengal. So, uh, so the Bengali people come to Vrindavan, it's not easy because it's a different climate. It, Bengal is more humid and Vrindavan is very dry. In Vrindavan, people eat wheat more. In, in Bengal, they eat more rice. So people come to Vrindavan, they have to eat chapati, they have to eat vajroti, uh, vajroti, so you know, very heat, they put a lot of heat in the body. Uh, if you do madhukari and they give you vajroti, and you eat, you have to be careful because it makes the body very hot. So the Bengali people come there, they eat chapatis, they miss the rice, they have a hard time. So he would get yogurt, dahi, and he would give them the yogurt to eat the cooler stomach. And in this way he was doing service for all the Bengali Vaishnavas. So he was a very good devotee of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu.
So, uh, we were talking about, how did I get this super design? <laughs> 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 huh? You were talking about Muslim, Chankazi. Oh, you know, the Chankazi, right? The Chankazi. We were in Srivast Pandit's house, the Chankazi, making people Muslim. And so the Chankazi broke the Madanga. And Srivas Pandit was very afraid because he was warned, and you know, you, you, you will all lose your caste. <laughs> so Srivas Pandit was a little afraid to have Kirtan after that. But Lord Chaitanya told Srivas, don't worry, Srivas. He said, if they come, even if they come and arrest you, I will come there to the court. And I will speak to the court. When the, and when the, when the Muslim judge asks you about uh, the chanting of the holy name, he said, I will speak on your behalf. And I will tell them, you get any of your Muslim priests, any of your Muslim uh, men from the mosque come here and can they make the wild animals can they get them to cry in ecstasy of love of God and when they fail I will do it I will, they can bring any, any living entity any creature Elephants, dogs, anything, I'll get them all to cry in love of God. And then Lord Chaitanya said, there was a little girl there, Narayani, who was a little niece of Srivas Pandit. And so Srivas, uh, Lord Chaitanya said to Narayani, he said, cry for Krishna, Narayani. And Narayani was only like four, four or five years old, and she began to cry. And she rolled on the ground in ecstasy, and she tossed and turned, and her tears were flowing from her eyes. The whole floor became flooded with tears. So Lord Chaitanya showed everyone, he convinced Srivas particularly that he didn't have to fear the Chankazi. And then, of course, then Lord Chaitanya had the, the procession. He called everyone. Thousands of people all came. And they had a big civil disobedience march. And they all marched to the Chankazi's house. And at that time, the Chankazi came out to meet Lord Chaitanya. And they talked about how the Muslim people are not actually following the Quran and the Quran doesn't encourage killing so many animals. And Lord Chaitanya had the, the Chankazi then told about how Lord Nishingadeva Nish came there and warned him not to ever interfere with the devotees and not to break the Madanga ever again. Mm. And then the Chankazi then promised that as long as he lived, as long as his descendants live here in Mayapur, they will never stop the Sankirtan movement. <coughs> so we go there every year, there's a big tree, there's one name tree and one champa tree. 
The Neem Tree represents Lord Chaitanya, and the Champa Tree with the nickname of the Chan Kati. 每一年我们都会去那个地方，那里有两棵树，一棵宁木树代表着朱才他们，一棵枪巴树代表着枪卡吉。And the two trees are huge; they've been there hundreds of years. 这两棵树非常的庞大，已经在那矗立了好几百年。So that is the the samadhi of the Chan Kazi. It's an important historic place in Navadvip. 那里是枪卡吉的 samadhi， 是拿瓦对府一处很重要的、具有历史意义的圣地。Mm. From the position of the Chan Kazi samadhi, they were able to prove that the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu must be on this side of the Ganga and not over there in Navadvip. 就是按照枪卡吉 samadhi 的位置，可以评，就是可以推断出主采坛的马哈布鲁的出生地一定是在恒河的这一边，而不是在拿瓦对府的那一边。So Shiva's Pandit was able; they were able to continue the kirtan then, after the Chankaji gave permission. 在枪卡吉给出许可之后，舒拉斯潘迪他们可以继续做 kirtan. And there was one lady who was serving in the home of Shiva's Pandit. Her name was Duki. Duki means one who is sad. 有一个女士在舒拉斯潘迪家里干活，她的名字叫 Duki. Duki 的意思是悲伤。So one day, Lord Chaitanya came there to Lord Ch to Shiva's Pandit's home, and Lord Chaitanya wanted to have he wanted to do Abhishek. 有一天，朱彩潘迪去了舒拉斯潘迪的家里，而朱彩潘迪马哈夫就想做 Abhishek. So Shiva's Pandit was happy, and he, he immediately arranged for it. And he had to bring many pots of water from the Ganga. 舒拉斯潘迪非常高兴，立刻做出安排。他们必须要从恒河拿来很多罐子水。So this lady Duki. She was the maid servant there in the home. She did a lot of hard work. She went back and forth to the Ganga, bringing big pots of the Ganga water for the Abhishek. This lady, her name is called Duki. She is the maid servant in the house. She went back and forth, bringing big pots of the Ganga water for the Abhishek. Now, Lord Chaitanya was appreciating her service, and Lord Chaitanya said, "From now on, your name will not be Duki. Your name will be Suki." 朱彩潘的非常欣赏他的服务，于是朱彩潘的对他说：“从现在开始，你的名字不再是 Duki 了，你的名字是 Suki。” Duki means sad or not happy, but Suki means very happy. Duki 的意思是悲伤不快乐 ，Suki 的意思是非常快乐。So Lord Chaitanya changed her name to Suki, and not only did he change her name, but she actually became full of spiritual bliss. 朱彩潘尼把他的名字从 Duki 改成了 Suki， 他不仅仅改了名字，而且他充满了灵性的喜乐。And there was also a Muslim man who was making clothes, and he also got the mercy of Sri Ras Pandit. 还有一个做衣服的穆斯林的男子，他也得到了 Sri Ras Pandit 的仁慈。So Sri Ras Pandit was very important in the past tense of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because his his home. Was where Lord Chaitanya would come, and Lord Nityananda would come and stay there in the home of Sri Ras Pandit. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 就是对我很多时候时光都在 Sri Ras Pandit 的家里，而且当主尼天南的 Prabhu 来的时候，他就住在 Sri Ras Pandit 的家里。After Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had gone to Gaya and come back after his initiation, and he started to chant the holy name, and he was in so much ecstasy of love of Krishna. Mother Sachi thought there was something wrong with him. When Chu Chai Tanya from Gaya 回来之后，他开始做推坛，开始唱诵主的圣名。沙奇妈妈觉得朱彩潘的生病了。Because he's always crying, all these tears coming from his eyes. He's calling to Krishna, Krishna, where are you? Because he always is crying, he always is chanting Krishna's name, Krishna, Krishna, where are you? When are you coming? I want to see you. Why are you not coming? I want to see you. When are you coming? I want to see you. So Mother said she was worried there's something wrong with my son. She had Shiva's Pandit come to see what if he could find out what was wrong with him. Sachi 妈妈担心自己的儿子是不是出了什么问题，于是她邀请 Shiva's Pandit 来看看他的儿子到底怎么了。And when Shiva's Pandit came and saw Lord Chaitanya, he said to Mother Sachi, he said, "Oh, I wish I had the same disease as your son." 当时瓦斯潘迪特来见了朱彩潘迪之后，他就对萨奇妈妈说：“哦，我希望我能够得跟你的儿子一样的病。<笑>” So she 
Shiva's Pandit could understand the real nature of the disease of Lord Chaitanya, then he has the love of God. So after some time, Lord Chaitanya, it comes time for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to take sannyas and he left, he left Mayapur and no more kirtan at the home of Srivas. Oh, there was one pastime I didn't mention. That was the passing away of one of the sons of Srivas Pandit. They were having the kirtan in the night, and one of the sons of Srivas Pandit had a fever, and the fever was so intense that at one point he just, the son just died. He left the body. And so naturally the ladies, his mother and other ladies, they were crying and feeling the pain of separation from the child. But Srivas Pandit wouldn't let the ladies cry. He said, don't cry, you'll disturb Lord Chaitanya's kirtan. And Lord Chaitanya was in the other room having kirtan with all the devotees and they had kirtan the whole night. And then in the morning when the dawn came and they stopped the kirtan, then Lord Chaitanya said to Srivas, I think something inauspicious has taken place here. Mm, so, at that time, Shiva's Pandit told Lord Chaitanya, he said, yes, during the night, my son passed away, he died. So Lord Chaitanya was shocked. He said, your son left the body. You did not tell me. You let me do kirtan all night. You didn't even tell me your son passed up, has died. Why didn't you stop the kirtan immediately and tell me? I so then Lord Chaitanya said, take me to the boy, where is the boy? And so Lord Chaitanya came in front of the child and put his hand on the child's chest and said to him, why are you leaving this home? You've taken birth here, why are you leaving? And then the young child opened his eyes and sat up and said, I took my birth here for some time according to my karma. Now my karma is such that it's time for me to leave this home. My father and mother, who are my father and mother? I have many fathers and mother. Every time I take birth, I have a different father and mother. But according to my karma, now it is time for me to go. And the child lay back down. And became a dead corpse. But hearing philosophy from the child, then everybody's heart was pacified. They could all understand the true nature of material existence. So when Lord Chaitanya took sannyas and he left Mayapur, then Srivas also decided to leave Mayapur and he moved to another village. But still he would go to he would go to Jagannath Puri for Rathya.
There's a conversation which takes place during the Rathyatra between Swarup Damodar and Devana and, and Srivas Pandit. Swarup Damodar was also he'd also been he was also coming from Mayapur, he'd been initially in Mayapur, but then he'd gone to Banaras and he was going to take sannyas eventually, but he didn't, and he came to Jagannath Puri. So he was the, the secretary of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One of the very intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya. And it said in Krishna Lila, Swarup Damodar is non different from Lalita Saki. So there's a ceremony called the Panchahira, Panchahira festival during Rathiatra when the goddess of fortune comes out with all of her soldiers. And the goddess of fortune is going to go to Gundicha because her husband, Lord Jagannath, has not come back. He's been away from home for a long time, so several days, so she's coming to find out what's going on. So, when Srivas Pandit sees the Goddess of Fortune, because Srivas Pandit in Krishna Leela, he's Narada Muni, and Narada Muni is a Vaikuntha man. And Vaikuntha, the Goddess of Fortune is prominent. You don't see gopis in Vaikuntha. So Srivas Pandit says, ah, look at the opulence of the Goddess of Fortune. She is so great. But Swarup Damodar says to Srivas, he said, oh Srivas, you don't know the opulence of Vrindavan. He said, Vrindavan, every tree is a Kalpavriksha tree. It can give anything we want, any, any fruit, any desire, so anything we desire can come from that one tree. And the cows in Vrindavan are all Kamadenu cows, they fulfill all of our desires. <coughs> and the dust in Vrindavan is Chintamani. But the people of Vrindavan are so devoted to Krishna. They don't want anything except flowers and fruits and milk to offer to Krishna. So in this way, Swarupa Damodar was telling Srivas Pandit about the glories of Vrindavan. So, Srivas Pandit, he had his, we said, we celebrated the appearance day the other day. We did Abhishek. Did you, did you go? Did you okay. Um, any questions? Hare Krishna Gurudev. 就是刚才讲到 Devalanda Pandita 他没有阻止他的学生 对Shrivas造成的冒犯 而自己作为老师要承担他学生的职, 呃, 
这是因为 Deva Lana Pandita 当时看到他的学生做错了，但是没有阻止他。如果有一种情况就是老师不知道学生做错了一些冒犯的话，那老师需不需要承担责任呢？ No, you saw. Uh, he's asking in another case. For example, the teacher, he didn't see what the student did.、Uh. Then that means he also need to take the karma, the reaction. Yes. Should. We said about Prabhupada, right? The devotee distributing books. We said about Prabhupada, 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 the devotee distributing books. So Prabhupada apologized to the man. He said, "I'm very sorry." Prabhupada 向那个人道歉，说我非常的抱歉。Prabhupada didn't see the devotee distribute the books. Prabhupada 并没有看到那个奉献者怎么派书。But the man complained. 但是这个人抱怨了。So even though he didn't see it, still teachers responsible. 即使没看见，老师也应该负责任。Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to train the student how to behave. Because the teacher is supposed to Good. Another question is, um, this Zhu Chaitanya in Sri Vas Pandit's house, house, do this tear tank. They have some restrictions, not allow some devotees to participate. But Zhu Chaitanya came to this world to spread the truth, to spread the truth, to spread the truth. He doesn't allow people to participate in this tear tank. What is the purpose of this tear tank? Zhu Chaitanya came to this world to spread the truth, to spread the truth, to spread the truth. He doesn't allow people to Well, initially the kirtan was not public. It was just for the devotees. 一开始这个 kirtan 不是公开的，只是给奉献者准备的。It was the inauguration of the kirtan, so it was a very special. These were very special kirtans. 这个是相当于 kirtan 的一个开幕式，这些是非常特殊的 kirtan. So, but they didn't. When when you have People who are not very devotees, when they come to the kirtan, then they will influence the atmosphere. If we want to let those who do not have any devotion to the kirtan come to the kirtan, then their presence will influence the atmosphere. So, Lord Chaitanya wants to experience the highest ecstasy. So, Lord Chaitanya wants to experience the highest ecstasy. So, Lord Chaitanya wants to experience the highest ecstasy. So, Lord Chaitanya wants to experience the highest ecstasy. So, Lord Chaitanya wants to experience the highest ecstasy. So, Lord Chaitanya wants to experience the highest ecstasy. So, Lord Chaitanya wants to experience the highest ecstasy. So, Lord Chaitanya wants to experience the highest ecstasy. So, Lord Chaitanya wants to experience the highest ecstasy. So, Lord Chaitanya wants to experience the highest ecstasy. So, Lord Chaitanya wants to experience the highest ecstasy. So, But when you open up to the public, to people who are not very, who don't have any faith, who don't have really, you know, who are just observing, then it's a different atmosphere. When you open up to the public, to people who are not very, who don't have any faith, who don't have really, you know, who are just observing, then it's a different atmosphere. So Lord Chaitanya wanted initially to experience the highest ecstasy. So Lord Chaitanya wanted initially to experience that pure atmosphere with all the, with all of his eternal associates. Zhu Chaitanya 想一开始的时候跟他所有永恒的朋友们去体验那种非常纯净的氛围。Later on, when he went to Jagannath Puri, then there would be kirtan every day. 之后他去加格纳普里，每一天都会做 kirtan. Give the holy name to everyone. 把圣名给每一个人 But Shiva's Pandit's home was some very 
was like Rasalila. Just like Rasalila. They don't let everybody go to Rasalila. So many people wanted to come to Rasalila. Krishna didn't want all these people. Even Lakshmi didn't get to into Rasalila. And so the parallel pastime is Kirtan at Srivas Thakur's house. Very confidential. Just for the intimate association. So to enjoy the very nice <laughs> no, we said Lord Chaitanya was very happy, right? Mm -hmm. Very nice. <laughs> it's a blessing, actually. <laughs> we never heard anything about this person giving reaction. Okay, what time is it? 四十九。还有什么问题吗?还有其他的,当时十八班级去了,德南的班级去进巴格拉登,然后他就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就就
possessed by another spirit. And so it's usually most of these things are not genuine, they're just putting on a show. There's people that are actually feeling this 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 ecstasy, they should go to a private place. Now Lord Chaitanya sometimes he did enter his spirit of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did sometimes enter into other devotees. We have said Lord Chaitanya gave mercy in three ways. First of all, sakshat, directly, people, anybody saw Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they could get love of God. And then there's uh, Avesha, Avesha, like Shakti Avesha, Avesha means empowered. Avesha, that's uh, just like this. There was this one devotee called Nakula Brahmachari. So Nakula Brahmachari, he was actually possessed with the spirit of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Nakula Brahmachari, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the so there was a, a devotee, a very intimate associate of Lord Chaitanya named Shivananda Singh. Right? Do you know Shivananda Singh? Shivananda Singh ma? Yeah, you know, he, he would take the devotees every year to Jagannath Puri. And he would pay all the expenses for all the devotees. So Shivananda Singh heard that this Nakula Brahmachari has got the spirit of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in him. So Shivananda Singh was doubtful. He thought, oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. But they told him, no, really, he's got the spirit of Lord Chaitanya. So Shivananda Singh decided he would go to where Nakula Brahmachari was and he would test him. And Shivananda Singh thought, he said, when I go there, he said, if, if, the, if Lord Chaitanya's spirit is really in the body of Nakula Brahmachari, then Nakula Brahmachari will call me. And he will know what mantra I'm chanting. So Shivananda Singh went to this one place where Nakula Brahmachari was. No, Nakula Brahmachari was in, he was exhibiting a lot of ecstasy because he was possessed with the spirit of Lord Chaitanya. And so many, many people were around him. A big crowd of people would all come. Nakula Brahmachari, so well, so Shivananda Singh was way at the back. There was many, many people in the front. Shivananda Singh was way at the back. And then Nakula Brahmachari turned to the devotees in front of him and he said, Someone is here called Shivananda Singh, and he doubts me. He doubts that Lord Chaitanya is in my body. Go and call him, tell him to come here. So the devotees went and they were calling out, Shivananda Sen, is anybody here called Shivananda Sen? 
路线者出去就大喊“西文南的森”在吗？这里是不是有一个人叫做西文南的森？那西文南的森 identify themselves. They said, "Go quick, Nakula Brahmachari is calling you. Go quick, go there." 西文南的森站出来亮明了身份，然后大家告诉他说：“赶快去 ，Nakula Brahmachari 在叫你，你赶快去吧。” And Shiva Nanda Singh came in front of Nakula Brahmachari, offered his obeisances. 西文南的森到了 Nakula Brahmachari 的面前禀拜。And when he got up, Nakula Brahmachari said, "And I'm chanting the four-syllable mantra." 当西文南的森禀拜完起身的时候 ，Nakula Brahmachari 说：“我知道你念诵的是四个音节的 mantra。” I am chanting. Oh, I, 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 I,